Hi kids! Welcome to our science class. For today, we are going to discuss about the materials that absorbs water. Our main objective for today is to classify materials based on the ability to absorb water. Let's go! Let's sing this science song. It's science time again, it's science time again. Oh, come and join the class, it's science time again. It's science time again, it's science time again. Oh, come and join the class, it's science time again. To start, please arrange the jumbled letters to get the hidden word. Are you ready? Go! Let's check your answers. For number one, we have matter. For number two, solid. Three, liquid. Number four, gas. And number five, absorb. Good job! Your next task is go around the room and list down three materials under solid, liquid, and gas. Go! Let's try to check your answers. Under solid, we have table, chair, book. Under liquid, we have water, juice, and alcohol. Under gas, we have air, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Good job, kids! Let's try this activity. We have here the materials, plastic wrapper, cotton ball, cloth, sponge, and paper. Here are the procedures. First, prepare a small basin with three-fourth full of water. Two, soak each of the materials one at a time. Three, test each material if it absorbs water. Number four, indicate your observation in your paper. Then, let's check it after one. Hi guys, let's try this activity. Which materials absorb water? So first, let's have a plastic wrapper. Let's try to dip it into the basin of water. Observe carefully. What happened to the plastic wrapper? Did the plastic wrapper absorb water? You're right. It doesn't absorb water because the material is non-porous. When you say non-porous, the materials do not allow water to pass through. Let's have the second one, a cotton ball. What is the characteristic of this cotton ball? Let's try to soak into the water. Observe what happened to it. As you can see, the cotton ball absorb water. Is the cotton ball become heavier when wet? Now let's try to squeeze it. What did you observe? Let's do it again. Next, let's try a small cloth. What is the characteristic of the cloth before putting it into the water? Let's observe the cloth after putting it into the water.
What did you observe? Is the cloth become heavier when wet? Let's try to squeeze it. What happened to it? Let's use a sponge. What is the characteristic of this sponge? Have you seen a tiny hole on it? Let's try to dip it into the water. Observe it carefully. What happened to the sponge after putting it into the water? What happened to the water inside the sponge? Let's try to squeeze it. Now, let's try a piece of paper. What is the characteristic of this paper? Let's try to dip it into the water. Observe carefully. Okay, now let's check the paper. What did you observe? Is the paper become heavier when wet? Let's try to squeeze it. Based on the activity, the characteristic of the material before adding to water, like the plastic rubber, is dry. After adding water, it becomes wet and it doesn't absorb water. For cotton balls, before adding water, it is dry and soft. And after adding water, it become wet and small. The answer here, it absorbs water. So it's a check. For number three, cloth, it is dry and soft. After adding to the water, it become wet and heavy. That's why it absorbs water. It's a check. For number four, sponge. It is dry and soft. As you can see in the video, it also have lots of tiny holes. After adding into the water or putting it into the water, it become wet and heavy. Of course, the answer here, the material absorbs water. It's a check. And lastly, the paper, before adding water, it is dry and thin. And after adding water, it becomes wet and easily be turned tear off or torn. And lastly, it absorbs water. It's a check. I hope you got it right, kids. Here are the things you should remember. First is absorb. It means to take in something such as liquid in a natural or gradual way. Some materials can absorb water than others. Next is porous. Porous is having a small hole that allow air or liquid to pass through. Examples are cloth, tissue, and paper. Lastly is the word non-porous. When we say non-porous, these are materials that do not allow air or liquid to pass through. Example, 
we have plastic can, stone, and spoon. Now, kind of give me another example. Good job! Based on our discussion, let me ask you this question. Why would some people prefer to use plastic bag than a paper bag? You're right! Paper bags easily get wet than plastic bag. A non-porous material which does not allow water to pass through. Next question. During rainy days, what kind of material are you going to use to prevent you from getting wet? And kindly explain why. That's right. We need to use raincoats to prevent us from getting wet. Plastic raincoat does not absorb water. Plastic does not allow water to pass through. For better understanding, please answer the following. Classify the materials according to their ability to absorb water. Write A on the blank if it absorbs water, and D if it does not absorb water. Go! Let's check your answers. For number one, the answer is A. It absorbs water. Number two, it is letter A. It also absorbs water. Number three, letter D. It does not absorb water. Number four, A. And number five, A. This will be your last task. Give at least five examples of porous materials. That's all for today, children. Thank you for watching and listening. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.